Welcome to Skyweek. I'm Tony Flanders from Sky and Telescope magazine, and I'll be your guide to the astronomical wonders that are currently on display overhead. Let's see what's happening in the sky from Monday, March 3rd to Sunday, March 9th. The waxing crescent moon is low in the west on Monday and then appears higher each evening. It's lower left of the Pleiades on Thursday and above bright orange Aldebaran on Friday. The moon is just past half lit on Saturday when it's upper right of Orion. And on Sunday, the waxing gibbous moon hangs just below dazzling Jupiter. This year, Jupiter is in the constellation Gemini, which flies almost overhead on March evenings. So this is a great time to view Jupiter through a telescope. If you don't own one, try to find a friend who does. Or see if a nearby planetarium offers public viewings. Even the smallest telescope will show Jupiter's two main cloud belts, and also reveal that Jupiter isn't perfectly round. The planet's rapid rotation makes it bulge out at the equator. Although Saturn is undoubtedly the most beautiful planet because of its amazing rings, Jupiter is the most fascinating to watch because it's constantly changing. Jupiter doesn't have a solid surface. What you actually see are clouds of frozen ammonia floating high in the atmosphere. Various trace impurities give these clouds their gorgeous but very subtle pastel colors. Jupiter's two main cloud belts are called the North and South Equatorial Belt. They're almost always easy to spot. But in 2010, the South Equatorial Belt disappeared for a few months. Jupiter's most famous feature is the Great Red Spot. It's an enormous hurricane, bigger than our own planet. Here's a time-lapse movie of the Great Red Spot and the churning equatorial belts taken over a period of a month in 1979 by the Voyager 1 spacecraft as it approached Jupiter. Jupiter rotates very rapidly, so the frames in the time-lapse movie had to be shot once every 10 hours, when the same side of Jupiter was facing Earth. Otherwise, all you'd see would be the red spot racing round and round like this. Earth rotates once every 24 hours, and Jupiter goes around once every 10 hours, almost two and a half times faster. But in addition, Jupiter is 11 times Earth's diameter. That means that a spot on Jupiter's equator screams around at 28,000 miles per hour, compared to 1,000 miles per hour on Earth, which is already plenty fast. So, centrifugal force pulls Jupiter's equator outward, flattening the planet enough to be quite obvious through a telescope. As a rule, the biggest planets in our solar system are the ones that spin fastest. That's no accident. Our whole solar system formed out of a spinning cloud of gas and dust. As gravity pulled the cloud tighter and smaller, it started to rotate faster, just as a figure skater starts to spin faster when she pulls her arms in. The spin flattened the cloud into a disk. Pretty soon, a ball of gas, our own sun, started to form in the center of the disk, and smaller clumps of gas and dust, destined to become planets, formed in the disk's outer regions. Each of those protoplanets collected its own mini-cloud. Some of the stuff in each mini-cloud ended up being drawn into the planet, while even smaller clumps, destined to become moons, formed in their outer regions. Just like the main dust cloud around the sun, the little clouds around the planets started to spin faster as they contracted. The bigger the planet, the more dust and gas it pulled in, and the faster it ended up rotating. Many of you will be getting up in the dark when daylight saving time starts on Sunday, March 9th. So next week, we'll take a look at what's up in the pre-dawn sky. Until then, this is Tony Flanders from Sky and Telescope magazine, wishing you clear skies and great views. Brought to you by Meet Instruments Corporation, manufacturers of telescopes and binoculars.